Hello dancers! So today's video is going to really be about me sharing bits and pieces of my journey that I felt were really important in me building my connection to my body and confidence with belly dance. So I did shoot a previous video about my belly dance journey and how I got started and so I might mention a couple things from there but really it's going to be more anecdotal uh, memories that I have that I felt really contributed to what I was up to in my belly dance journey and what I did in outside of that to really help inside of my belly dance process. So first and foremost, I got exposed to belly dance in 2001 by my two roommates, uh, Rada, who is from Palestine, and Leila from Jordan. I love them to pieces. Uh, this is like 21 years ago <laughs> where I first got exposed to belly dance, but I was so captured by their joy of their music. And I've never heard, like, although I was raised in a military family, I was never um, exposed to or crossed paths with people who were considered Middle East, North African, uh, from the like Mediterranean, anything like that. It was, my, my uh, exposure was limited to different kinds of people. So first of all, I find them extremely wonderful. Um, because they were just so kind and so generous when sharing with me about their culture. So they played music. I was like, what the fuck is this? This is amazing. And then I just started seeing them doing hip drops and little side bumps and stuff like that. It was super casual, very social, because we were just at home in our living room doing these movements. And I just watched them and I tried to capture it. What I loved about what I had seen in this moment was the joy that they had. And they weren't trying to get it right. Right? It was just this movement that they had in their body of which they learned from wherever, where there was watching people doing it for so long, just letting it come to them, right? And then what I really took away from it though was not necessarily the technique, although I did work on that because I was fascinated with how they did it. But what I also took away with, and I still remember their faces today, like Layla doing this and Rada just doing this with her, you know, doing hip drops with her hip. I was just fascinated at the enjoyment that they had and there was no sense of judgment. All there was was, I want to dance, it is fun, I'm in my home, let's do it. So I was like, oh, this is amazing. I love to dance, I love to dance ever before then, but I love to dance even more <laughs> so now because they just presented this wonderful um, like picture of what this could do. Fast forward multiple years, I didn't really do anything with belly dance. I just enjoyed and appreciated and only, you know, was uh, participated a couple times here and there. But when I moved to Phoenix, which was fast forward like five years later, then I started to actually study. And as I had mentioned previously in my other video, my first mentor was Diane Tisu, who is in uh, Mesa Chandler area, which is not too far from me now. So it's wonderful whenever I get to see her. Um, but she had taught me a lot about have it feel good in your body, like let the feeling overcome you. And so we did focus on technique, but only enough to really execute the choreography or execute the movement or just enough to empower you to get started. So what I really learned from Diane Tisa was, and I slash her name like that because she does that too sometimes. I'll just call her Diane because that's how I really relate to her today. So what I really learned from Diane was this connection to enjoyment, connection to the audience, this emotional compulsion to be in the moment versus, you know, this technical background of you need to get it right. It has to look this way. Um, don't do this at all, like all of those things. And although those things are valid and really important, depending on the context in which you're in, it wasn't the focus of my training underneath her, as I felt anyway. It wasn't the focus of my training underneath her. What really was the focus was the enjoyment and the connection. So when you have that kind of focus with your body, it starts to shift the filter in which you start to approach the movement. So when I did a lot of the technique, it wasn't when I was taught her technique and when I went through the technique and watching her, she didn't break down as much as you would think like people break down today. What she really did was look at this, feel my hips, I'm gonna shift you. 
So when I learned it was really and truly based on a feeling I had in my body. I wasn't, it, I mean, it was beginning, right? So it wasn't like I had this huge technical checklist to go down and see like, oh, what can I do in order to make sure this is correct? That being said, when something was really not looking so hot, she told me, straighten your legs, make sure you drop your tailbone, stuff like that, in order for me to at least complete this basis understanding of the movement. So when I really, really learned, although I love and I'm addicted to the technical side of things and how the body is mechanically um, supporting the movement, how I first felt was, how does it feel? Do I feel my weight transferring? Do I feel like it looks like her? Do I, I can't even tell you how many times I looked down at my body. We didn't have a mirror, by the way. When I first learned, we didn't have a mirror. So I had to look down. I'm sorry if it's like intensifying the mic, but I had to look down at my body. I still remember looking down and circling my hip to the front as I was doing the movement. The other thing I want to mention when I was learning is I really related to not being small. I felt fat, I felt overweight. By social standards, I was fat and I was overweight. I'm only like, at the time, I think I was like five, three and a half, five, four, and I was like 160 pounds. And I did not have a huge muscle mass in my body, like amount of muscle mass. So in my eyes and to standardization, I would be considered overweight. My BMI was high um, and it was accurately high because I didn't have a lot of muscle mass. I just, I didn't do weightlifting. I didn't do anything like that. I was just, I ate a lot. I wasn't as mobile as I could have been. So I was very curvy um, in my movement. So as I looked down, a couple things were happening. One was I looked down at my body and I was like, oh, does this look like what Diane's looks like? And also, damn, my stomach is soft as hell. Like, it is round. I feel like I was pooching it out. I was pushing it out. It felt very uncomfortable. I felt like it made me look fatter in some respect. And uh, what ended up happening was in those moments, I started to really train myself on how to minimize myself. So do the movement, but minimize myself. So do you get how fucked up that kind of is? Like in a way, not like judge, judgment, -y, but like how it's, it's fucked up in a way of like you're trying to get somewhere and then you're holding it back. So there's this opposition that's happening and this dissonance that happens when you're like really wanting to get this movement and then really holding yourself back mentally because we already have this preconceived notion of what our body should look like. However we got there, it, it doesn't matter at that point. It doesn't matter how we got there at that point. It just matters that we have it, right? So now we have this notion of like, oh, like I now, be, I didn't have a mirror. I had to look at myself physically doing the movement with all that crap being said in my brain and she'll str still try to get the movement. It was actually very difficult and there were moments where I felt um, very uneasy moving in my body. I felt whenever Diane, cause she, she really believed in me at a very early age or a very early stage of my dance game that she would put me in the front of class to be an example. It took a lot. <laughs> of courage and bravery for me to be in that position, one, with the way I felt about my body, with the way I felt about my movement, in addition to that, also being okay with other people in the class seeing me in a leadership position of any kind. So it was really difficult. I had to manage a lot of my thought like, she asked me to do something. I'm going to do it because my teacher asked me. It didn't harm me or anything like that. And so I was like, yeah, I'm okay with it. But then getting up there and still wanting to execute the movement cleanly so I could be there and support my fellow dance mates. In addition to, I kind of have to reconcile this mindset with my body. There's a lot going on, right? You can see how easily we get there, but also how easily we stay there and don't want to deviate from that because one, we're so used to it. But the other thing, when we don't deviate from it, it really causes a lot of discomfort because we, in it, even with already discomfort that we have, but it created a lot of discomfort because that means I had to start shifting and I had to let go of this identity of I'm not a leader 
And if I was gonna be a leader, I had to be skinny. And if I'm gonna be a dancer, I have to be skinny. So like it forced me to really push and away from this mindset, you know, that I had already for years, for years. I've been struggling with body image and like all of this stuff and very, very, very low self-worth and very, very low self-esteem. So when I was thinking about that, that was starting, starting to build that connection and my confidence with my body. So through that journey, I just learned, I just learned a lot. I just learned a lot. And as I wanted to get better and better, I just practiced more. I, my teacher said amazing things to me and really loved me and was very compassionate and kind. And I think having those people around you really makes a difference because if people tell you fucked up shit, like you don't need to hear it. You don't need to hear it. It doesn't help you. And I know I'm cursing a lot is because I'm very passionate about this <laughs> because I remember my journey and I remember how many times people say nasty things or things that are just doesn't help, doesn't serve you, doesn't push you forward, isn't supportive, isn't encouraging, and how easy it can drag us back into that place of being small. Remember when I talked about diminishing myself and being small and minimizing myself? It doesn't help. So she was loving and amazing. And during that process, I was with her for a couple years. Then I went on to study under Ava Fleming, Fleming who is uh, at that time in my dance journey, she was like, still in the midst of her peak. She was an amazing dancer, a phenomenal teacher. I learned so much. So I went from this connection to my body in an emotional feel level to now cultivating this technical side of the mechanics of my body and gaining that body awareness. So I played on that mental game. And as I continued to cultivate that mental game with her, uh, with Ava, I also started to cultivate my body awareness and the mechanics of how I did movement. And she had taught me so much about what it is to really manipulate my body to get an effect on my body when I dance. And I loved it so much. And in that respect, how I started to really build my connection there was I had to get quiet in my brain. And I also had to go really, really slow. I had to slow down and be with myself and quiet out the noise of whatever talk was happening because in that moment it was getting so frustrating to try and do this movement mechanically when all I could hear was, you keep fucking it up, you keep fucking it up, you keep fucking it up. But in the end, what that did for me was it just took me further away and it kept me messing it up, messing it up, messing it up. And so I realized, I was like, this isn't helping.